Hello, I'm Los Angeles City Controller Ron Galperin, and I'm so pleased to be part of the Los Angeles Public Library's continued work to promote financial literacy. All year long, the library, through its outstanding Department of Lifelong Learning, hosts life-changing programs that teach and support financial empowerment, immigrant integration and inclusion, and health and wellness. And the best part about it is that it's all free. As controller of our city, I make sure that public dollars are being put to good use, keeping our government honest, responsive, and accountable. Because people want to know and deserve to know that their government is doing its best to serve them. While it's important for the city to plan how we use our money wisely, I want you all to know that it's just as important for you to do the same. Because the city's financial health depends on the financial health of all Angelinos. The programs that the library is hosting this week and throughout the year are here to help everyone succeed and to make positive financial choices for our futures. I'm so grateful to all of our libraries and incredible staff and Vita and its volunteers for all they do to ensure that you and your families have the tools and resources, not only to prepare your taxes, but to help you be on the right financial track. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Lizette Gabriel and I work as a librarian in the Business and Economic Department here at Los Angeles Public Library. Welcome to today's presentation called Get Banked. This program is part of an ongoing series of programs intended to support financial literacy in April and is brought to you by the Alliance for Economic Inclusion, Banked on LA County and LAPL. Today's presenters are Mary Duran from the FDIC and Donisha Smith from Banked on LA County Oh, my bad. <laughs> County. Um, they will talk to you about the benefits of opening a bank account, the resources to get you started, and the different types of accounts available. Please send us your questions throughout the program, and we will have a Q&A session after the presentation. I'd now like to pass the presentation over to Mary and Donisha. Thank you, Lizette, and good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank the Los Angeles Public Library for inviting the Los Angeles Alliance for Economic Inclusion, an initiative of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, to present this workshop, You Can Bank On It, Why Should I Get Banked? A question we shall answer in today's presentation. Next. The two presenters today, uh, as Lizette said, is myself, Mary Selena Sudon, who's a Senior Community Affairs Specialist with the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and Donisha Smith, who's the Chief Center for Financial Empowerment, Consumer Business Affairs, Los Angeles County. Next. I do want to say that uh, this disclaimer that this presentation represents the views of the speaker and not necessarily those of the agencies they represent. This presentation cannot be reproduced or distributed by a third party or on a third party website without prior authorization. Next. So what are today's objectives? We want to provide you with information to consider if you'd like to open a bank account by sharing information on why should you get banked, financial uh, protect, uh, products, services, and providers, how to open an account, how to manage a bank account, how do you get started, share information on Bank on Los Angeles County, and additional resources. Next. The FDIC 
um, Corporation is a, or the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation is an independent agency created by the Congress in 1933 to maintain stability and public confidence in the nation's financial uh, services by ensuring deposits, examining financial institutions, and managing uh, bank receiverships. Next. Why should you get banked? Opening a bank account uh, is one of the most important steps you can take towards reaching your financial goals. Why? Because putting your money in an FDIC insured bank account can offer you financial safety, easy access to your funds, savings from checking, cashing fees, and overall financial peace of mind. Your money will be safe. If you do not currently have a bank account, but have been thinking about opening one, here are some things you should consider. Next. There's top 10 reasons for getting banked. First, your money is safe. Your money is protected against error and fraud. There's consumer protection laws that protect you. You get your money faster with no check cashing fees. You can make online purchases with ease and peace of mind using a debit account from your checking account. You have access to other products from the bank as well. Next. You can transfer money to family and friends with ease. You have proof of payment. You can keep an eye on how much money you have and you can set up useful alerts to let you know if your account is low in funds or to set them up to see if there's a large transaction, you can establish limits so you can know what's happening with your account. And what's most convenient is you can pay your bills from wherever you are. Next. So, so now we're going to discuss your needs to determine to help you determine which financial products and services you can select. Next. So the key takeaway from today is consider your needs and shop around for financial products and services. Next. So what are financial institutions? Well, they're generally banks or credit unions. They accept deposits. They lend money through credit cards, car loans, personal loans, mortgage loans, and they can offer other products and services such as money orders or cashier's checks or wire transfers. And some banks have safe deposit boxes that you can rent. Next. So what's the difference between banks and credit unions? Well, banks have customers, credit unions have members. You have to meet a credit union's criteria for membership to open an account. This may be based on where you work or you live or military service. Banks generally do not have these limitations on who can open an account. Credit unions are not-for-profit organizations owned by their members, and most banks are owned by shareholders, which means they're for-profit businesses. Next. So the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation protects your funds deposited into a federally insured bank in case the bank fails. Insurance is up to at least $250,000 per depositor per FDIC insured bank per ownership category. So for example, you could have an account just in your name. That would be one account that's insured. You could have a second account with a joint maybe with your spouse or your mother, father, that would have an additional $250,000 insurance. And when you go into a branch, you would see the FDIC logo on the bank's window. The, if you're thinking about a credit union, there's also the National Credit Union Administration who protects your funds very similar to the way the FDIC insures their deposits. Next. So accounting services. So accessing your services uh, through retail locations, your an automated teller machine, customer service, uh, phone numbers, um, and emails through a website, uh, mobile banking and smartphone apps, so there's a number of ways that today that you can access your bank account. And also, if you need a reasonable accommodation, the bank 
you can ask for it. So for example, if you need relay calls, including video relay, or you can have to, uh, to the bank arrange for a sign language interpreter, these are all things that the banks provide as a service to you if needed. So what financial products and services do you need? Well, what's important is what, do, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to save money, spend money, manage your money, borrow money? So the important thing is to start with your needs. So now let's talk about how would you um, open a savings or a checking account. Next. So the key takeaway from this section is to know the general process for opening a checking or savings account, including options if you're initially unable to open an account. Next. So saving and checking accounts provide you um, safety and security because of the federal deposit insurance on the account. They can earn interest depending on the account. It's convenient. It helps you to build a relationship with a bank because you may need additional products, for example, to borrow funds. And once you've established a checking or savings account, you are a customer of the bank. Another important consideration is the important consumer protections that are in place in the event of an unauthorized transaction from your account. Next. So how do you open a bank account? Well, in today's environment, you can either apply in person or online. In either event, you will be completing an application what information will you need to open an account? It's always best to be prepared so that you, when you go in, you're ready to go. So first of all, it's they're gonna require a driver's license or a state issued ID or passport or military ID. So that would be your primary identification. They will ask you for your social security number or individual taxpayer identification number known as ITIN. And some banks will require a second piece of identification, which could be a phone bill that has your address uh, or a copy of your current lease or a work ID. So most of institutions do require two pieces of ID. If you're opening a checking account, you're gonna be asked whether you want to opt in to handle overdrafts and i'm going to discuss this option further in the net in a few minutes you will need to make a first deposit so you'll need to know if there's a minimum deposit requirement to open an account you'll receive information which are called disclosures they're either going to provide them to you in paper or send them to you electronically if you're opening your account online the disclosures in explain key facts you need to know about the account. You'll also have the opportunity to activate account tools. For example, having online access to your banking account, uh, requesting a debit card or an ATM card. And this is also the opportunity for you to ask questions. Ask as many questions as you wish so that you understand how your account operates. Next, opt-in relates to overdrafts. By law, everyone is opted out. You have the option to opt-in. So what does this mean? When transactions go through, but there's not enough money in your account to cover it, it creates a potential overdraft situation. So programs to cover overdrafts for ATM cards and debit card transactions. If you opt in, then there's going to be a certain transaction fee to process, um, a fee for processing this to review the transaction because you're in overdraft. However, if you don't opt in, there will be they won't, they are going to decline your transaction, but there will not be a fee for that. So if you opt in, they may decide to pay the transaction. 
they'll charge you an overdraft fee. They may decide not to cover the transaction, particularly if it's a brand new account, and they will charge you a fee. So if you stay opted out, they'll decline the transaction, but they won't charge you a fee. If you opt in, they're going to review the transaction, decide whether to pay it, charge you an overdraft fee, or decline covering it, means they bounce the, the, the uh, transaction back, and they'll charge you a fee. I hope that you were able to understand that. Next. So it's important to know that not everyone is approved to open a bank account. Banking history reports um, are often accessed by the banks to determine whether you have any unpaid negative balances on an account opened elsewhere, or maybe that there was fraudulent transactions related to your account, or perhaps your account was closed by a financial institution because there was an issue on how the account was ma being managed. So you have the right to one free banking history report from each nationwide consumer reporting company every 12 months. And this banking history report is different than a credit report. It has, it's not related to a credit report. It's a report related to how a banking account may have been handled at another institution. If you never opened account, you're not gonna have a report. If you never had an issue with any of your accounts, you're not gonna be on this, there'll be nothing on the report. In addition, if you get declined or they, you know, that they don't open your account, your checking or savings account, they have to tell you that it was based on this bank history report. And that allows you to access a report uh, regardless of whether you had already requested one in the last 12 months. Next slide. So these are the two major uh, companies that provide bank history reports. One of them is called Check Systems and the other one is Early Warning Services. And here's how you request it. For Check Systems, you can go online and actually request um, the your report or you can uh, request it by mail. For early warning services, you have to download the form, complete it, and then either mail or fax it to them. Next. So the, re the, re the key takeaway is know the process for opening a savings or checking account, including options if you're unable to open a bank account. Next. So now we're going to discuss how to manage a savings or a checking account. And the next, and the key takeaway from this section is learn the rules of your account and keep track of how you're using the funds in your account. This can help you keep costs down and develop a positive banking relationship. Next. So how do you manage your savings or checking account? Well, first of all, be sure you understand the rules of your account. When, they, when you open the account, you may recall we discussed that they gave you a disclosures. So understand the fees such of, as going below the minimum balance or making too many transactions from the account. Any questions you have, be sure to ask them so that you understand how your account is being managed. For example, some savings accounts only allow you to take six withdrawals in a month. And if you exceed that, there'll be a fee for that. Some savings accounts or may have a minimum deposit, for example, $300. And if you go below that, there could be a monthly fee. So make sure you understand the rules to each of the accounts. Then keep track of your deposits and withdrawals. You can keep a record each time you deposit withdraw money. Um, and also make sure that you uh, note down any 
future automatic deposits or automatic withdrawals so that you don't overdraft your account. There's tools to help you keep on track. There's many mobile applications. There's the bank's online system. And there are other tools or paper-based log, just such as a transaction register. In fact, I use a uh, transaction register and I just check my account every couple of days to see what's come through, what's still outstanding, and make sure that I didn't miss a transaction or that my partner didn't uh, make a big uh, transaction and I wasn't aware of it so that we don't overdraw our accounts. It's also easy nowadays to sign up for email or text message alerts to notify you if you're going uh, below a certain level in your account. Next, I wanted to also suggest that you consider direct deposits. This allows your money to be safely and securely deposited into your account electronically. So this, so you don't have to go in person to make a deposit. Many employers offer direct deposits for your paychecks. You may also be able to set up a direct deposit to have a certain amount from each paycheck automatically sent to your savings account. So some employers allow you to send one amount to one account and a subsequent amount to another account. So you can put a large portion in your checking accounts and a certain amount in your savings account from each paycheck automatically, electronically, making it simple, making sure you pay yourself first by saving. Also, you can have your IRS tax refund deposited automatically into your account. It's faster than waiting for a check. And for individuals who qualified and had a bank account established with the IRS, they saw their automatic deposit faster, as well as their um, economic stimulus checks were automatically um, deposited instead of having to wait longer for it to arrive in the mail. Next. So remember the key takeaway from this section is to learn the rules of your account and keep track of how you use it. This can help you keep costs down and develop a positive banking relationship. So how do you get started? There's a thing called a checklist checking account that could be a good option if you're thinking about opening your first bank account. You can make purchases with a debit card instead of writing checks, and it allows you to access your account and pay your bills online or using a mobile application. Checking Checklist accounts typically enable customers to avoid spending more than the amount available in their account. If there's not enough money in the account to cover the transaction, the transaction will not go through and there's no fee, no overdraft fee that is charged. Many FDIC banks have options to open a bank account online. You can schedule an appointment to open an account in person at your local branch as well. Be sure to check to see which branches are open, what their hours are, and whether you have to make an appointment to open an account during this um, time that we're in as a result of the pandemic. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to my co-presenter, Donisha Smith.
Next slide. So who is LA County? So the LA County, um, could you make the screen a little bigger for me, please? Um, serves the consumers and businesses since 1976 and they, uh, to protect a fair and vibrant marketplace. Uh, they serve consumers, businesses, and communities through education advocacy and compliant resolution. Next. So they also enacted the Center for Financial Empowerment, which convenes, advocates, and builds capacity to strengthen the financial health of Los Angeles County residents with a focus on Black, Indigenous, and people of color to build economic resiliency. And they have three elements to it. They build capacity, of the financial empowerment sector to enhance service delivery to LA County residences. They convene cross-actor partners to share best practices, tools, and research to collectively improve systems that promote economic stability and household wealth. And they advocate to champion and collaborate for policies that advance wealth equity, economic mobility, and consumer protection. So your money is worth protecting, bank on it. This is an initiative called Bank on Los Angeles County. Um, let's see if Donisha can come back on. And I'd be happy to turn it over to Donisha. Danisha, we can't hear you if you're presenting. Are we, is Danisha ready to go? Lizette, would you, what would you like us to do?
We apologize for these technical difficulties. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to have a momentary pause while we figure out some of the technical issues and our next presenter, um, Donisha Smith, um, can log on again. So if you just bear with us for a moment um, and thank you for being with our program. And uh, we're going to pause it for a bit and we'll be right back. All right. Thank you. All right, let's try this again, folks. Thank you for your patience. This is the downside of working from home. Again, my name is Donisha Smith. I oversee the Center for Financial Empowerment, which is a unit housed within the county's Department of Consumer and Business Affairs, also known as DCBA. DCBA is your local consumer protection resource. 
we provide a variety of free programs designed uh, to help maintain a fair and vibrant marketplace here within the County of Los Angeles. So we investigate consumer fraud complaints. We enforce the county's minimum wage ordinance. We provide support to uh, the immigrant community, support to local small business owners, and we also oversee the Bank on LA County program through the Center for Financial Empowerment, which is the division that I oversee. And there you can see uh, our mission statement, the Center for Financial Empowerment convenes, advocates, and builds capacity to strengthen the financial health of county residents with a focus on BIPOC communities to build economic resiliency. Next slide. So now I know that was fast, but I hope that gives you a little bit of context and a little bit of background about who DCBA is and all the great resources we have. Now let's spend a few minutes talking about Bank on LA County. Next slide. All right. Bank On is a national movement to increase access to safe and affordable bank and credit union accounts. The national program is overseen by the Cities for Financial Empowerment Fund. It's estimated that there are 63 million adults in the U.S. who are unbanked or underbanked and as a result rely on costly alternative financial services like check cashers, payday lenders, and pawn shops for routine financial transactions. Unbanked residents or consumers can spend as much as $40,000 over their lifetime managing their finances. And that is a significant cost for those who can least afford it. Access to a basic transactional account is critical. It's an important first step in participating in the financial mainstream, depositing earnings securely, paying bills efficiently, accessing credit, and saving for emergencies. And you might be surprised to know that it's estimated that 20% of our LA County residents are unbanked. So that's well over a million people here locally in our account that do not have a mainstream account. And as we've alluded to, without access to a mainstream financial account, many of our county residents are very vulnerable to using expensive alternative financial service providers. So banking access supports financial stability. Being bank makes it easier to achieve your financial goals. Next slide. We can skip this slide. Thank you. What's great about this initiative is that the Cities for Financial Empowerment Fund has developed a comprehensive set of account standards that banks and credit unions adhere to. The account standards are designed with consumers in mind. The accounts are designed to be safe, affordable, and functional. There are core or required account terms and conditions that participating financial institutions must agree to in order for their checking account to receive the bank on seal of approval. This includes no overdraft fees, no account inactivity fees, free telephone banking, free online bill pay, and many other conveniences. When a financial institution wants to be a part of the Bank On Initiative, their account is reviewed and vetted by the National Consumer Law Center, and they must pass a certification process. And passing that certification signifies that they indeed meet the safe, affordable, and functional account standards. So this is a really great benefit to consumers because it helps take the guesswork out of comparing and choosing an account. Next slide. And Mary alluded to some of this earlier, but the pandemic has really highlighted the importance of having a bank account. Having a bank account has been critical for everyone to receive their stimulus payments in a timely manner, unemployment and other emergency benefits fast, safe and remotely. And so 11 of the participating financial institutions in the Bank On program have accounts that can be opened online without having to leave your home. 
Um, and so that's another great benefit about uh, this initiative. The next slide. So our website address is dcba.lacounty.gov. And the bank on information is, is housed on our bank on page at slash bank on. As I mentioned earlier, bank on is a national program, but there are roughly 90 local coalitions across the country. And so the Department of Consumer and Business Affairs oversees the LA County initiative. You can visit our website to learn more about the benefits of banking and to view our promotional videos. We also have this handy matrix that you see here. So when you click on that green icon that you see in this screenshot, it will open up this matrix document and allow you to view a list of our local participating financial institutions and view the terms of their accounts. We have 10 local financial institutions that support our initiative. This includes credit unions, and state banks and national banks. So we have a good mix of participating uh, financial institutions. And this reference sheet is really helpful. Uh, it allows you to quickly and easily compare and contrast the accounts, and it should make it easier for you to decide which account is best for you. Next slide. And so I would welcome all of you to please join us on Twitter at LA County CFE. We're always sharing information about financial empowerment resources throughout the county. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today. I apologize for the technical difficulties uh, and now I'll turn it over to Mary to close out our session. Next, thank you, Donisha. So now we're at almost the end and we'll, you'll have an opportunity to ask, them, ask us some questions. But the most important thing is, what are you going to do with the information you learned about today? If you decide to open an account, what will you do? How are you going to do it? And are you going to share your plans with someone? As you know, sometimes sharing a plan with someone helps us make it happen. In addition to that, I wanted to share with you that at FDIC.gov, backslash education, we have additional modules that you can learn on a variety of topics related to uh, financial education. Next, we also wanted to provide you with resources. So the list of the top 10 reasons to open a bank account, a checklist on how to pick a bank account, uh, which helps you comparison shop, uh, there's also a checklist for managing your checking account, some frequently asked questions for economic impact payments. We have an FDIC Consumer Resource Center that you can access. And of course, Bank on Los Angeles County that Donisha was just talking about. And the FDIC just this week announced a Get Banked promotion nationally, and there's uh, the information on the website that can provide you additional uh, details as well. Next slide. So with that, Donisha and I want to thank you. want to thank the library for hosting us today and please accept our sincere apologies for the um, uh, technical issues we had. Um, and with that, I'd like to open it up to any questions. We can't hear you, uh, Lisette. Oh, my apologies. <laughs> I forgot I was still muted. Um, so I've asked my colleagues to leave the resource page for you from the presentation. So for those of you who are on your laptops, tablets, um, or devices can take a screenshot um, or picture of the resources for your perusal um, later on. So I've checked the comments and we have a few questions. And the first question is, if I want to open an account, are all bank branches open? <laughs> That's a great question. And currently they aren't. So, and it depends by each institution. So some banks have closed a few branches temporarily. Others have limited the branch hours. 
Others have require you to make an appointment to come and open an account. So once you check out which bank you'd like to open an account with, call the local branch and ask them what their policies are. Because I know you don't want to waste your time and find out that the branch is closed or you get there and they won't take care of you because you need an appointment. Okay. If I could add on to that, um, I'd like to just mention that on our website, on our Bank on LA County page, we have a document um, that we created to provide banking tips in light of the pandemic. And on that document, we indicate which of our participating financial institution partners have the functionality to allow online account opening. So visit our website and take a look at that document. Uh, it should be a helpful resource for you. All right, so let me see what else has come in. Okay, um, why should I consider opening a bank account now? Well, that's a great question, Lizette. You know, I think this experience for the last year in the pandemic and not being able to necessarily go to the bank or um, some uh, shopping centers, you know, the market sometimes don't have enough cash and they're asking you to use a debit card. So it just makes the whole process easier. In addition, should you get a check with a phone app tied to your bank account or part of your bank services, you can actually deposit your check at home um, using your phone. So it's just a lot easier in this current environment to have an account that you can use your debit card with. And Danisha, I don't know if you want to add anything. That You covered it well. That's all, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so let me see what else do we have. Um, how can I find who offers a bank on account? So again, if you go to dcba.lacounty.gov slash bank on, you'll see a list of our participating financial institutions. We currently have 10 participating financial institutions. And again, we have a mix of national banks, state banks, and credit unions. Okay, let me see if there's anything else. Um, is it possible, oh yeah, here we go. Is it possible to open an account for my, uh, for my children? And what requirements do I need? Yes, yeah, so um, if you're, child is under um, 18, you can open up the account um, jointly or as a trust account. And a trust account is that uh, you can make deposits, the account will be in both names, but the child cannot withdraw any money from the account without the parental signature. And for there's sure. many banks that offer a, a savings account, particularly for youth. So be sure to inquire if they have such a product, because sometimes they'll have special fees and uh, discounted fees and special features. Okay, so let me double check if there's anything else. Okay. Um, some of them have been answered by our staff. All right. Okay then, so thank you everyone for being here with us today. We are at the end of our presentation and I just have a few words regarding our upcoming programs. So uh, this being Financial Literacy Week, which is continuing through Saturday, please, jo please join us for a week of exciting financial literacy workshops on topics like elder care, learning more about financial literacy and Financial Literacy Day, which is on Saturday, April 10th. You will be able to make a one-on-one -on -one telephone consultation with a certified financial planner on that day. For more information on all of our programs this week and to sign up to speak with a financial planner, please visit www.lapl.org backslash financial dash literacy dash week. Um, I will also post it on the comment box. And the program for Saturday is booked but you can still sign up to be put on the waiting list. All right, so as to our department, the Business and Economic Department also has a variety of programs on job search, job opportunities with the City of LA, 
interview skills, and small business topics. You can find out more about our programs by visiting www.lapl.org, the online calendar. Okay, so if you guys do not have any more questions, let me see if I can put this quickly in the comment box. Okay. Um, oh, no, I couldn't. <laughs> so my bad. <laughs> um, so thank you again for joining us for today's presentation. And apologies for the technical issues that we experienced. Oh, thank you. It's there. <laughs> that we experienced during our presentation. Um, once again, please join us for the rest of the programs and for any upcoming programs throughout the year.